Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is tonsillitis. Tonsillitis is again from ENT, disease of ENT, which belongs to medical surgical nursing. Let's get started with the video. Tonsillitis is the infection and inflammation of tonsils, which is characterized by sore throat and dysphagia. Tonsillitis is mostly seen in children, but it can affect people of all ages. Tonsillitis rarely occurs in children under the age 3. That means tonsillitis occurs in the age group where there is underdeveloped but still developing immunity. This is a diagram where there is characteristic feature of tonsillitis, swelling or inflammation of the tonsils. Because of the swelling, it is raised above its surface and seen through the oral cavity during examination. There are types of tonsillitis which can be viral, bacterial. Viral tonsillitis is caused by viruses like influenza, while bacterial tonsillitis is caused by group A streptococcus. Bacterial tonsillitis is commonly called as step throat. People with without tonsils can also get a step throat because bacteria can still infect that surface. The mode of transmission can be sharing of food, drink or same utensils, close contact with infected person, close contact with the surface which is contaminated or inhaling any particle through airborne route. Clinical features can be first of all sore or dry throat and then pain or difficulty in swallowing which is dysphagia, red swollen tonsils and throat, also whitish spots on tonsils or white, yellow or grey coating on the tonsil. Fever occurs above 100.4 degree Fahrenheit. Also, there are swollen lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are the glands which are located nearby and around the chest. It is also located below the ears. So, during palpation, we can find swollen lymph nodes. Associated with, associated with that, we can find stomach ache or vomiting, which is more common in younger children. In diagnosis, you can obtain the history. History must contain age, chief complaint and medical history. In physical examination, inspection and palpation of throat can be done so that we can find out swelling or inflammation. Else than that, symptoms such as fever, cough, running nose, rash or stomach ache can be assessed. Examination of ear and nose can be done for other signs of infection because infection can spread to the surrounding organs. Side of the neck can be palpated so that lymph node swelling or inflammation can be located. Also, culture and sensitivity test can be done by obtaining the sample. Complete blood count can be done. Because it is transmissible, we have a preventive management. For prevention, we should avoid sharing food, utensils or drink with someone who is infected or someone who has sign and symptoms. Toothbrush, toothbrush should be replaced regularly and washing should be done especially before touching the nose or mouth or hand washing should be done after coming in contact with the infected person. In medical management, antibiotics can be given because it is related to infection. Penicillin, clindamycin and cephalosporin group of antibiotics should be given for viral infection. There should be a healthy amount of rest and fluid to stay hydrated. Furthermore, we can provide antiviral medicine as well. For pain, ibuprofen or acetaminophen can be given. In general management, patient can drink liquid like tea which is warm. Also, patient can gargle with warm salt water. This gargling should be done before the meal so that it won't interfere with the GI tract functioning. Throat lozenges can be used so that it can soothe the airway. Surgically, in case of chronic tonsillitis, tonsillectomy can be done. Complications can be chronic tonsillitis, tonsil stones, that is deposition of calcium, Peritonsillar abscess, that is around the tonsillar region, pus can be deposited, and rheumatic fever because it is related to beta streptococcus bacteria. So, one of the complications can be rheumatic fever. Thank you.
you so much next topic will be discussed in next video